Week 9 in the NFL was great. I'll just quickly go over a couple little stats, fun stats, before I get into my Week 10 picks. Russell Wilson, 378 yards, 5 TDs. It's the most TD passes in a team's first nine games with one or zero interceptions since 1950. 2019, I'll go through the top five or six here. Seattle, Russell Wilson, 2019, 22 TDs, one interception, nine games played. New Orleans, Drew Brees, 2018, 21. I'll, I'll just post the picture when I go through it. I'll post the list when I talk about the football to start here. I'll take a pick of it or something. Um, Lamar Jackson, 61 rushing yards, pair of TDs on the ground. Baltimore, big win over New England, 37-20. Wasn't even that close, except the Ravens, they fumbled the ball twice inside their red zone, their own red zone. So that led to New England points. I believe they scored a touchdown and a field goal off them fumbles. So that was half their points right there off two careless plays. Dolphins got their first win. Eagles, 22-14. Took advantage of an, uh, a very undisciplined Bears defense, continuously jumping offside and extending Eagles drives. A, a ridiculous, ridiculous penalties on both sides of the ball for the Bears all day. The Eagles offense uh, should have stepped on their throats, should have kept the, the foot on the pedal the whole way, but still got the win. The defense is coming around. Chargers, wow, destroy Green Bay. Is Green Bay sort of coming back down to reality a bit? Are they as good as that 7-1 and one record? I still love Green Bay, but I don't think they're that much better than every team in the NFC as I feel about Seattle and about um, San Francisco as well. I think there's a, a lot of balance within the top four or five teams are very competitive in the NFC, maybe even six or seven teams in the NFC. The AFC definitely can't say the same. I think it's a three-team race. Baltimore, Kansas City, New England. Anyways, I'll show them stats later. Better yet, here, I hope you guys can see that. I hope I'm holding it in the right spot there. But there's Russell Wilson. There's the other guys that have done it the year, the TDs, the interceptions, and the amount of games they played. So a few recent ones, but wow, what a list for Russell Wilson. All right, week 10 picks. LA Chargers on the road at Oakland. The Chargers are one point favorites coming off that big win against Green Bay. Bosa and Ingram have been playing well up the middle for the Chargers who have won two in a row. They have a top 10 score in defense. Oakland Raiders, two centers still banged up. I don't know if they're gonna be back. Rookie Josh Jacobs, uh, will he be able to get something going on the ground? Uh, the Raiders finally played their first game at home after 48 days in a row without a home game or something like that, 46 days, somewhere around there. I, I'm going to roll with the Raiders at home. I think they'll do enough to get it done. And the Chargers, they just kind of fucking tease us every year. They do this. They'll start to get in the playoff hunt, look like they're going to compete, then they'll slide back a bit. Then at the last minute, they'll come up and they'll just squeak in or just miss the playoffs. So I'm going to roll the die with Oakland on this one, uh, taking the points at home. Kansas City, six-point favorites on the road at Tennessee. The Titans banged up secondary facing Mahomes, who's likely to return. Tyreek Hill, Kelsey, the blah, 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 blah with Kansas City. They're just so unstoppable offensively. And I don't think Henry will be able to take advantage of a weak inside pass rush, de or sorry, pass, rushing defense of Kansas City to keep them close enough in the game or to keep Mahomes off the field long enough not to put up enough points to cover a touchdown. So I'm growing with Kansas City, six point favorites on the road. Buffalo on the road at Cleveland. Cleveland somehow is a three point favorite, I guess because they figure these two teams are even and they're the home team, so we'll give them three points. Maybe it's the public not believing in the Bills and believing the Browns might be able to turn their season around. I don't believe in it. All the on-field issues, off-field issues, from watches to shoes, OBJ, uh, Jarvis Landry, Baker Mayfield, and his homeless inspector gadget looking fucking trench coat mustache look, whatever the fuck that is. I'm going to go on with the Bills. I think the Bills straight up win this game, let alone cover the spread. Arizona on the road at Tampa Bay. Arizona's four and a half point road dogs. Tampa Bay's favorite in this game. Winston's only only gone three games this season without throwing an interception. I, I just think the Cardinals defense and the young players on the offensive side of the ball will be able to get enough done, get the road win, and cover the points. So I like Arizona as an underdog and to straight up win the game. 
Giants Jets. They play in the same fucking stadium. Somehow the Jets are favored or are the home team. The Giants are favored by two and a half. I think one team <laughs> one team has hope, the other team sees ghosts. <laughs> like I, I don't know how you can go I don't know how you can pick the Jets. I don't think you can pick the Jets to win another fucking game the rest of the season. I will be all over the Giants on this one. I'll be betting on the Giants hard. I, I really love a couple games. Kansas City, the Giants, Baltimore. I absolutely love this week. And I will be hammering those three games hard. Uh, which Giants, two and a half point favorites. I am taking them. I made them best bet. Atlanta plus 13 on the road in New Orleans. Atlanta's 30th in points allowed per game. I think the Saints just roll past Atlanta. I don't think this game is close. I think this game is like 38-17 or some, something like that for New Orleans. So I'll take the 13. It's a high number, but I don't think Atlanta can stop the Saints on a single drive. I don't think they'll punt once in the entire game. And I don't think the Falcons will score more than 17-18 points. So take the Saints and the points. Detroit plus two and a half on the road. Chicago two and a half point home favorites. Detroit's pass defense is horrible. Detroit's overall scoring defense isn't that great. Uh, what, what stat did I write down here? They have the 27th ranked scoring D. No running backs. Their running backs are banged up. If Trubisky cannot score points for the Bears in this game, you might as well just get rid of him at the end of the season. He will never amount to nothing if you can't get it done against this weak Detroit defense. I'm going to take my chances on Trubisky and the Bears, and I think they get the home win and cover that small spread. So Chicago minus 2.5 at home. India is hosting Miami. Miami got their first win last week. The Colts are 10-point favorites. It looks like Jacoby Brissett will be back. For them, uh, no Hilton, no problem, doesn't matter. Miami, you got your one win of the year. Now join Cincinnati and the Jets without another win the rest of the way. Enjoy your season. Put your money on Indiana, in on Indianapolis, sorry, and take and another double-digit favorite that I don't like doing, but I got to. I just can't see any way that they're going to cover. Carolina plus five and a half on the road to Green Bay. Green Bay five and a half point. Home favorites after getting smoked by the Chargers last week. Did LA expose a couple weaknesses in Green Bay's defense? I think they might have. I don't know. McCaffrey, Kyle Allen, Jones, Rodgers. Depends on what Devontae Adams does, how healthy he is uh, after dealing with the foot or the toe issues he's been dealing with the last few weeks. I'm going to go with Carolina to cover the five and a half points on the road and Green Bay squeak out a win. This one I see being within a field goal. I wouldn't be surprised if Carolina straight up won this. I'm going to pick Carolina straight up and against the spread this week. Green Bay, I think they showed weaknesses. I don't think they'll be able to stop McCaffrey the more I think about it. I'm taking Carolina on the road. LA Rams on the road to face Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh got a win after in the, after the Colts lost Brissett, they were on their third string quarterback. Vinatieri missed a field goal that could have won it for the Colts at the end. I have no faith in Pittsburgh. They're going to come back down to reality, playing a desperate LA Rams team that needs to get their shit figured out, especially with San Francisco squaring off. One of them is going to take an L today, so they got to make up ground on at least one of them or stay in that wild card hunt in the NFC. I like the Rams to cover the three and a half points. Ramsey and Donald, the Rams D, I think will be able to hold Pittsburgh to 10 points or less in this game. Minnesota on the road at Dallas. Dallas, three point home favorites. Uh, Dallas, you can't get off to a slow start in this one or Minnesota will bury you. Delvin Cook, um, and it's all that much more important for Minnesota to get off to quick starts because Kirk Cousins, if I remember correctly, is 0 10 and 1 or 0 and 11 or. Something like that. He's winless in 11 games when trailing heading into the fourth quarter in his career, I believe that is. So, Minnesota, it's important for you to get out to a quick start. Dallas, you continue to get off to slow starts. You're lucky you're playing the Giants last week on Monday Night Football. Short turnaround this week. Um, I am going to roll with Minnesota as the road dogs, and I think Delvin Cook will be able to get it done. I I'm really banking on Thielen's hammy being healthy enough where he can play or at least be somewhat of a factor against Dallas, and they get off to a quick start. Dallas slow start. Not a good mixture. I'm just going Minnesota. I, yeah, I'm sticking with Minnesota. Zeke, though, man, I love that guy, man. That, that dude is just phenomenal. 
Um, Seattle, six point road dogs at San Francisco. Big divisional matchup. Seattle trying to keep pace. I don't think they're good enough to beat San Fran. I think they're a much weaker team than their record shows. I think Russell Wilson is carrying that team on his shoulders. It's him and him alone doing it. So I think Wilson will be able to do enough to keep Seattle close and cover the six-point spread. But I think San Fran gets the win. I see this being a field goal game coming down to the end. What a great Monday nighter. That's my Week 10 picks. Peace.